So welcome. Um, we've got people flying in as we do this, but I will officially call this meeting to order. Uh, I think that it has always been a tradition to open the annual member meeting with art. And this year, once again, we're gonna start the meeting with poetry. So please give some positive Zoom reactions or jump around as I introduce Lucia Cherchu, who is the Poet Laureate for Dutchess County. And Lucia, would you please give us a <laughs> reading? Um, yes. Um, thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you for working so hard and supporting the arts in our area. Um, I am delighted to see you all, even if it's uh, on Zoom, and I'm grateful for the miracles of technology. So um, uh, I'm going to read a poem from my book titled Train Ride to Bucharest. The publisher is actually local as well. You may have heard of Ship Meadow Press and its phenomenal editor, Stanley Moss. Um, I'm going to read a poem titled How Many Thousands of Words. And I chose this poem because as a bilingual writer, I want to encourage everybody to learn a new language. If you already know two, learn a third one. If you already know three, keep practicing. Uh, it's good for your brain. It makes you empathetic. It helps you to learn about another culture, and it also teaches us all humility once you realize just how difficult it is to learn another language. Of course, it also teaches us to uh, understand the way English works, our own language. So, how many thousands of words? Hanker, desire, crave, covet, long for, earn. In fall, when they took us out of class for two months at a time to pick grapes, I filled 100 buckets a day and learned English words I copied in a notebook, then transferred to lists to carry around. Groove, habit, routine, rut. Each word released the dopamine gates of the brain. Each word pungent like the dozen kinds of grapes we picked. The distance between the aura of each meaning like the grapes we tasted. Grind, rasp, grate, oppress. The list of synonyms each word linked to the other, the way a couple of us strayed away from the group and got lost, always finding our way back in the burned colors of the vineyards against the sky. Grovel, fawn, creep, cringe, wallow, humble oneself. In ninth grade, I spent a year reading the portrait of Dorian Gray. When I found a new word, I wrote it in my notebook and added minuscule dots next to the word in the dictionary every time I had to look it up again. Grudge, stint, dole, withhold. Every word came with its own aroma a man balanced on top of a truck inside a large wood basin full of grapes, boots up to his thighs. As he moved in the grapes, splashed, bent to pick up the bucket, I hoisted up to him and he laughed. So this is a poem from my book, Train Ride to Bucharest. And whenever I, uh, 
I find a word that I learned while I was picking grapes during communist camps. I remember uh, how I felt oppressed at the time that they took us out of school for three months to pick grapes. But now I remember it fondly. And some of the greatest times of my life are picking grapes on this wonderful hills in Romania. Thank you everybody for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Lucia, for that beautiful poem. And thanks for opening our meeting today. I see lots of uh, virtual love going on in there. So thanks, gang. Okay, so um, if you had a chance, you might have noticed that an email came out, at least one, I think several, with an agenda for today's meeting, if you'd like to look at it. Also, the, the uh, minutes from last year's meeting, which we're going to approve in the course of today's agenda, and the annual report. So I just want to start off. The next item is the, the chairperson of the board's remarks. Um, so just to say that we've had two very unusual years. Um, last year in the annual meeting, the board chair at that time, John Nelson, suggested that maybe we could change the Arts Mid Hudson slogan to be Together We Endure. And I think that that continued to be true through 2021. Um, but at the start of the pandemic on the board, we were pretty worried about what would happen and uh, very uncertain about what a pandemic would mean for Arts Mid Hudson. And while things continue to be a little bit uncertain, for example, it's still difficult to say when we can have in-person events again and, and people will be comfortable to come to them. But I think I represent the whole board when I say for a while now, through much of 2021, we've been feeling pretty confident that Arts Mid Hudson is not only surviving a global pandemic, but really still continuing to thrive as it goes on. So the organization continues to be healthy and stable, especially financially stable. Uh, we've been moving forward as much as possible with programming, regranting, and other kinds of activities. And a large part of this ability to move forward, and in fact, to be healthy and stable, is due to the fantastic and intrepid staff, all of whom adapted pretty seamlessly, it looked like to me, to either remote work or partial remote work. So if everybody could please give some love to the staff, uh, whether it's the Zoom reactions or dancing around in, on your video, they've really made a huge difference to the organization getting through this pandemic. Um, but I also want to make sure that I thank, there's a, such a strong community of people around Arts Mid Hudson, and I'd say there's no time that we felt uh, the positivity more than during the pandemic. So this includes members, artists, programming partners, local leaders that we work with, donors, and, and all kinds of other supporters uh, that give us support in many different ways throughout the Mid Hudson region. Um, who stayed in touch, who came to online events, and really kind of kept the organization going with all the forms of support that we had available to us. So I think this really connected community uh, has been a huge part of weathering the pandemic. So thank you. I think you're all included in that as well. Thank you so much for being a part of um, getting through this pandemic with a healthy organization. If you haven't had a chance to look at the 2021 annual report that was emailed, I'd recommend checking it out when you have a few minutes. It's only 12 pages long, um, but it's absolutely packed full of information about Arts Mid Hudson and what the organization did and the successes in 2021. Um, so as usual, thank you so much to the staff for compiling this really important document each year. And thanks to the supporters who all made all those positive facts of information possible for this annual report. But it's a cool read. Um, and sometimes when you look at them next to each other, they're a cool read. If you can't find the email, they always get posted onto the website. And in fact, I think, um, oh, yep, I think uh, we're getting that posted in the chat right now, in case you wanted to pull it up and take a look as we're meeting. Okay, so let's move into a couple other things. We're going to start with, if you've got the agenda up, we're going to start with approving the minutes from last year's annual meeting. 
Uh, we need to accomplish certain things to meet our bylaws each year, and this is one of them. So I'm going to make a motion to approve the minutes from the 2021 annual meeting. If anyone is willing to second this motion, could you please type your, your second into the chat so we have it down? Great, we have at least one second. Thank you, Pam. Um, uh, so following kind of regular Robert's rules, the standard next thing is to ask if there's any discussion, edits, questions about the meeting minutes from last year. If so, again, so we really have it down, um, please feel free to type into the chat if you have any questions and we'll give everybody just a moment to do their typing in case there are any questions. All right, I'm not seeing anything in the chat. So, and it's not normally a contentious topic. So I'm going to move us to the vote. Um, and so to make the vote as official as possible, so we're recording the things that we're supposed to record. Everyone who approves the 2021 minutes from the annual meeting, please type into the chat, approve or something along those lines. I, yep, I works. And we'll keep this as a, a record. Fantastic. So much approval. Great. And it seems to be slowing down. So if anyone is against approving the minutes, please type nay or something along those lines into the chat. And likewise, if you prefer to abstain from the vote, if you could please type abstain or something close to that into the chat, and we'll give it just a moment. Great, so overwhelmingly, the minutes are approved as per previous years. Well, thanks for that, everyone. I think we'll continue to do our votes that we need to record um, through this meeting in this way. So next, we're going to go to Roger Dequino, who is the board treasurer, and he will present uh, the 2021 year-end financial report. Roger? Hello there. Hi. Yes, I have some numbers to present. <laughs> Artsman, Artsman Hudson has completed its 57th year of operations and continues to be, operate in a fiscally prudent way despite you know, crazy challenges from pandemic 2021, not to mention 2020. So uh, just a little review of, of some of the numbers. We have, I'll break them down. Uh, I didn't know I was gonna present them. I should have done them online, but okay. Anyway, in earned income for 21, 19, 2021, from the gallery, from the Hutchess, Duchess Homemade Shop, workshops and special events, arts awards of Duchess at Ulster County, and the gospel uh, singers, this gospel concert, 2021 had an income of $63,000. 2020 had an income of $74,000, like a 14% uh, we had received a 14% decrease from 20 to 21. And most of that is uh, the gospel concert just squeezed in in February, February of 2020. And we know what shortly happened after February of 2020. So we did pretty well in considering that, uh, gospel, uh, that the gospel did very well and we were shortchanged a bit. Anyway, we move on to bigger and better numbers. The Artsman Hudson uh, private support for inc private support in 2021, which includes memberships, donations, and foundations, uh, received $114,000. And the prior year, we received $108,000. So that was an increase of five and a quarter percent. So that was a good category. The other very good category is our public support from Dutchess Tourism, Nysaka, and Elster County did very well at $662,000. Uh, 
versus the prior year of $588,000. That was a 12% increase. Uh, thank you for that public support. And once again, AMH had a clean audit for 20, 2021, thanks to Linda, Lisa, and the staff for being prudent in, in with the expenses and staying close to the budgets while maintaining the continued support of all programs through marketing and contracted services. Arts Mid Hudson is the organization of this, where state and local governments, corporations, foundations, and individuals can come to fund arts in the region and build a strong economy. Uh, our last category would be total expenses. For 2021, we had a, a expenses of $770,000 uh, versus a budget of the year of 747,000. So we basically, went 3% over budget, but given the year we had, it was, that was quite well. But, and lastly, I'd like to thank, also thank our auditors who I see online here today. Uh, we have Tracy Badgley and Lenore Sanchez from the firm of PFK O'Connell Davis Accountants and Advisors for all their support and, and guidance. Thank you again. That's it. Any questions? Thank you, Roger. Yeah, does yep. anybody have any questions? Yeah. I don't see any raised hands, and I'm also not seeing any questions in the chat. And just as a note, I'll I'll add as well that um at each board meeting, the board reviews sort of the the proposed budget for the year against where things are. So there is regular oversight of that. Okay, thanks, Roger. I'm not seeing any questions for that. All right, so the next piece of business on the agenda is the board election. Um, and we from the 2021 board are very excited to present a slate of 13 candidates. Starting a couple weeks ago, about two weeks ago, maybe a little more, you might have noticed emails coming around. Uh, we shared a short bio about each of the candidates in case anybody wanted to take a look at the slate before the vote. Uh, this year, well, in 2021, the board made a really concerted effort to increase the number of board members that will be serving in 2022, partly because we think it provides a really healthy sort of array of experiences and perspectives, but practically speaking, it also means that there's kind of more people power to get more work done on the board. And we were very successful at that. We had a really great recruitment season. And on this year's slate, you'll notice that there are two candidates who are running for a second three-year term, but 11 people who are running for a first term on this board. So I'm going to make the official motion to approve the slate of 13 candidates who consist of Ava Yurchison, Barbara Todd, Mary Jean Skelly Miller, Angela Shapiro, Andrea Rhodes, Serena Marrero, Anita Jones, Tempe Hopkins, Troy, Tel Troy Del Valle, Roger D'Aquino, Jonathan Silly, Fallon Brady, and Marina Ballantyne. Would, anybody, would anyone be willing to second this motion? So, oh, David, thank you. We have some seconds in the chat. Great, so does anyone have questions or discussion before we take a vote? Please go ahead and put a question right into the chat and we will address whatever questions come up. I'll give everyone just a moment in case they're typing. Fantastic. Not seeing anything in the chat. All right, then I'm going to move to the vote. Um, we'll do the same thing. Anyone who wishes to approve the slate of 13 candidates, if you could please type your approval into the chat so that we can record it. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
Fantastic. Okay, so the approves seem to be slowing down a bit. Then let me also say anyone who wishes to vote against the slate, please go ahead and type your nay or something like that into the chat. And likewise, if you wish to abstain, please type abstain or something similar to that into the chat and we'll record everyone's votes. Just gonna give it one moment in case anyone's typing. Great, I think at this point, even if there were an abstention or a nay, we still have an overwhelming approval. So I am delighted to welcome all the 13 candidates to the 2022 board. Thank you so much for giving your time to Arts Mid Hudson, and I think we're looking forward to a really great year. So everybody give some Zoom love to the new board members. Um, just as a reminder, according to the revised bylaws that we uh, voted, that the members voted on last year, board members are first elected to the board and then decide among themselves who will be in the officer positions. So that's gonna be determined soon. And I'm sure there'll be not only an announcement, probably by email, but we will also um, in the coming days get the board page of the Artsman Hudson website updated with, every, with all the new board members and also listing the officers. So congratulations, new board members. Um, the next item on the agenda, is to recognize the uh, board of directors, members of the board who are continuing. So board terms are three years. So each year there are some who are turning over and we have an election, but we also always have um, a portion of our board members who are continuing in the middle of a three-year term. So I just wanna recognize the continuing board members who will also be a part of the 2022 board. They are Chris Cantelli, Sydney Cash, Megan McCann, Ori Pinello, Sean Strong, and David White. So thank you all very much as well for your, uh, your service to Arts Mid Hudson. If everyone could give these continuing board members a little bit of love in Zoom, that would also be great. We do a lot for Arts Mid Hudson and we know it. All right, we're also gonna need to give some love as I recognize the advisory board. We have a wonderful advisory board, uh, a very big and wonderful advisory board of people who contribute uh, their expertise and all kinds of advice whenever they're called upon by the board or the staff of Arts Mid Hudson. And because they really do so much for the organization, I wanna make sure to recognize these advisory board members for their contribution as well. So let me just read out their names and we'll give them some love in the Zoom. Sadna Bargava, Frank Costello Jr., David Cavallaro, Kelly Ellenwood, Maria Elena Ferrer Harrington, Grace Angela Henry, Eugenia Jones, Ev Mann, Tim McQueen, Wilfredo Morell, Sarah Pasty, Ruth Spencer, Gully Stanford, Ray Watkins, and David Wise. So advisory board members, thank you so much for all that you do for the organization. We would be lost without your expertise and the advice that you provide to us. Um, there are also three people, um, one of them cycling off their three-year board terms. So I'm one whose board terms over at the end of this meeting, but I also want to give a huge thanks to John Nelson and Robert Langdon for their service to the board. Uh, I've really enjoyed being your board colleague and thanks so much for the time and your expertise that you've brought to us. Uh, but you were also re just really great people to work with. So thank you very much for the, for the, uh, the board service that you've provided. Um, and I also want to just give a little shout out to an ad hoc committee that I owe a lot of great, uh, a lot of, um, I owe a lot of credit to. About last July, when Linda announced her retirement, since then I've been chairing a search committee. We actually called ourselves a transition team with two partners in crime, David White and Ruth Spencer. Uh, David's a continuing board member and Ruth is a continuing advisory board member. And I just wanna say a huge thanks to both of you. Um, the ED search was 
I think we could call it a significant amount of work. And I'm not sure that I could have survived it without the two wonderful and collegial people on this team with me. So David and Ruth, thank you so much. Um, the search has made a big difference, I think, also to Arts Mid Hudson. So I, I hope everyone's giving them some love in the Zoom as well. Which I think is a great segue into the next agenda item. Um, I am beyond excited to introduce to all of you the new executive director of Arts Mid Hudson, Allison Pugh. At the start of the search process, um, I think it's always really hard to figure out or predict how things are gonna go. And there's a lot of variation in how a search can go. So I'm very relieved and also very proud of the work that we've done. We not only had a really great process, but we also have a really great result in Allison. So Allison's gonna join Arts Mid Hudson starting this week officially. And she brings a very impressive skill set to the organization. So, Allison, would you like to come on camera and unmute yourself and maybe say a few words to our members? Yes, I think I'm camered and unmuted. Yep, I'm hearing you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, it is so great to be here on the eve of join, uh, literally on the eve of joining. Uh, the team and I'm so thrilled to be joining the Arts Mid Hudson team and um, be with you here, you know, here with you tonight for the annual meeting. Um, I'd like to actually thank the search committee, Betsy, David and Ruth for their thoughtful consideration of every one of us who was involved in the process. You know, their leadership has been really inspiring and it's a beautiful reflection of the organization's values. So thank you, all three of you, for this process. Um, it's been a really wonderful process for me. Uh, I'd also like to give a shout out to um, the staff who I must say are known beyond the Tri-Counties for their dedication and their professionalism. So. Uh, yay, and I'm really looking forward to working with all of you. Um, Betsy, um, so, oh, and then the other thing I want to mention is um, I'm looking forward to working with you, the members, the board, and the advisory committee. Uh, and I'm particularly looking forward to getting to know every single one of you. So, um, Thank you for including me in this meeting and for welcoming me to the team. Um, so Betsy has asked me to tell you a little bit about myself and about my background. So I would say that, you know, over the years as an artist and arts professional, I have worn many hats. I've been a producer, a presenter, a curator, a grant maker, um, a, an advocate and an educator, uh, among many other things. And I think that's true for most artists, that we wear a lot of different hats in our life. Uh, as an artist, I maintain an interdisciplinary um, practice and with a background in visual arts, dance, and theater. And I love to collaborate, um, and I have a particular love for different kinds of pub different forms of public art and public presentation. Um, at Creative Capital, a national not-for-profit that provides funding and career development for artists, I played a key role in the development of the organization and particularly the development of the awards program that includes grants for artists as well as career development services. During my six year tenure as the Director of Programs and Services, I oversaw the awards process for more of more than $12 million to 242 artist projects. Um, creative capital from the very beginning, the part of our mission was to not only support artist projects, but to also support the artists um, and help them think and work toward building truly sustainable lives and careers. And so um, we, in the first three years, we created the Artist Services Program, which really worked with 
uh, worked with our grantees um, specifically in those areas. And we were noticing uh, after a while that we were having so much success with the artists. They were really embracing some of the skills that um, were being shared and taking them out and doing phenomenal things in their lives. So that is when I had the idea to take, take these things that we were working on with them and create um, a program that shared these things with other artists. So I created um, a program uh, that developed workshops and webinars uh, to offer life management skills and business skills to artists to really help them along to create sustainable lives for themselves. And that program um, was by artists for artists. It was developed in a peer-to-peer -peer model. And um, we served more than 15,000 artists acro across the country and were able to partner with more than 100 organizations uh, to work with those artists. And it was my honor uh, and uh, pleasure to see so many lives uh, changed, so many artists turn their lives around and move in directions that they really wanted for themselves. So um, most recently, I was the director of the Petronio Residency Center. It's a national uh, residency program for dancers and choreographers. And um, I, was, I, managed, uh, I, I managed the uh, residency program and I was able to really grow that program and include a lot more residencies and I also uh, launched a dance education program for uh, and partnered with the local uh, school district in Greene County. And so we were able to make uh, dance classes available to more than 1300 students in our first year. So that's a little bit about me. And uh, as I said, I'm very, very excited to join the team and um, of, of this truly amazing organization. Thank you, Allison. We're truly excited to have you on board as well. And I hope to the members that are here today, you're getting a little bit of a hint uh, what a great fit Allison seems like she's going to be with Arts Mid Hudson. We're feeling very good about uh, having her on board starting this week. So I'm sure that um, everyone will hear plenty more, uh, get to know Allison in the upcoming months, and perhaps even have some events, hopefully some in-person events where you can meet her. Uh, but anyway, just to say welcome, Allison, and we're super excited to have you on board. Okay, so I have uh, a, one sort of two-part announcement that I want to make as we reach sort of the end of this meeting. Um, in honor of the great and amazing impact that Linda Marson Reed had on artists in Dutchess, Orange, and Ulster counties, you may or may not have heard that Arts Mid Hudson's created a new annual fund that provides unrestricted grants to three artists are ideally we're thinking of this as one each year from each of those three counties. Uh, Linda was a big advocate for unrestricted funds for artists while she was at Arts Mid Hudson. And those kind of funds are very hard to find, I think, for artists. So if you're, if you're interested in contributing, this is gonna be an ongoing grant annually um, that's in Linda's name. We're calling it the Empowered Artist Grant because it is unrestricted to the purpose. And if you'd like to contribute, uh, we would welcome everyone to be a part of this wonderful grant offering. We're very excited about it and it's going to artists in our region. So every dollar that's donated, that's raised for this Empower Grant goes directly to the grantee artists who win the grant. Um, we thought that, uh, and we think this is a little bit groundbreaking as well. It's often a critical need for artists to have unrestricted funds so that they can continue their practice, elevate their careers, and be more visible within the community. They can use this money not only for certain categories of things, but for whatever they wish, whether that's creating work, purchasing or renting equipment, 
um, accessing some kind of training or educational opportunity or even paying their bills. So since Arts Mid Hudson believes, and Linda was such an advocate too, that artists play a critical role in our community for creating culture, for reflect, reflecting our values, for even inspiring young people to get engaged in the arts, we've really in, uh, envisioned a grant that fully supports artists and allows them to do their work in our region in whatever way they want. Um, so related to that, there's sort of a second announcement that um, related to the wish you were here option. So there were some member artists who participated in the 2021 wish you were here exhibit who have agreed to auction off their work to raise funds for this grant, this artist, the empower artist grant. So you'll, you should get an email shortly, sometime soon, with a link to the auction and a little bit more information about the grant. But if this idea of unrestricted funds for artists gets you jazzed, then definitely keep an eye out for those messages to come out. And if you're able to, we'd welcome your contributions to support artists. So did I miss anything? Uh, Melissa, was there something in the chat that I missed or does anyone have another item that didn't make it onto the agenda, something, something that we overlooked today before we move towards adjourning. All right, I'm not seeing anything in the chat. I'll give people just a moment to type. Great. Yep, awesome. That is our agenda for today. So I want to say thank you as we adjourn to, again, thank you, Lucia for providing our opening poetry reading. Um, we're going to outro with the music of Tony DiPaolo from the Music of Humanity. He is uh, funded by the Statewide Community Grant Program and a clip of him playing is gonna play us out after the meeting is over. Thank you everyone for joining us here today. We're very hopeful that we'll see people again. Um, I think 2022 promises to be a pretty exciting year for Arts Mid Hudson. And I hope that we can start getting together in person again soon. So this meeting is officially adjourned. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank mm -hmm. you.